Ian, Pat, tell me about a tell me a story. This is now becoming the official uh, Atari ROM preservation or ROM preservation uh, podcast. But this is an Atari ROM. That this is a story via Ars Technica that's making the rounds. Uh, there's an announcement made earlier this month. Uh, the digital preservations at the Dumping Union. That's a hysterical name. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. I guess those are the main folks. We'll keep that going. Made an important announcement in the world of arcade game uh, emulation. Collective had gotten its hands on a ROM image of Aka R, an extremely rare Atari cabinet uh, prototype, arcade prototype, and one of the most prominent remaining cabinets that had to, to this point never been available, available through emulation on MAME, which is multiple arcade machine emulator. We've all, we all love MAME. We, we love it. Okay, so this is where it gets weird. People aren't sure entirely how this got dumped and preserved. This this ROM. This is like this is like a documentary thing that could happen. Yeah. So uh, I had heard of this. Of course, I've never seen one of these before in my life, so I can't comment uh, much about this. So, but there's very few of these cabinets. They made prototype cabinets, and they were all in collectors' hands. And Three you, of them, and you can play them. But only at special events because it's a it's a rare cabinet. Right. So in that sense, to some people, it was preserved, but the still the ROM they didn't know the ROM was digitally preserved. Right. Because God forbid something happens, you can't get at it. So let's let's look at this game here. Let me just uh, put the volume down just in case. It's like a it looks like a missile command only it's uh, surrounded uh, as opposed to you use a trackball or maybe potentially or a spinner maybe. And then you shoot. You're in a circle. You shoot around. It's like a it's like a shooter, but you're stationary. Yeah. It's like it's kind of like not Vectrex in a way. This looks really fun. Yeah. It's a combination of I want. It's a combination of like uh looks like asteroids and like missile command. Com like a weird combination. Yeah, or missile command and like a, a reverse tempest. I don't know. It's it's interesting. And it zooms in. This is a cool game. I'm on board. But the problem was, was that there was no. It wasn't preserved that we know about. So this is what the theory was. How this got out. That a technician. Working on the, the I guess, arcade uh, game collection of a person who owned one of these cabinets, somehow went in, worked in other machines, and then serotypishly, is that the word? Ser yeah, I think so, almost. Got whatever, his ROM reader, and then dumped the ROM while he was there. And, and then smuggled it out. And that's the story that, you know... That's what, that, that's what people are claiming. The only thing I'm going to say is that this is not like dumping an NES game. You'd have to go and take out the chips off the board, right. put each individual one into a reader. You would need time to do this. So if the owner didn't have knowledge of this, where was the owner? Or was this like over the course of a whole day where someone was, was there someone on their own? There, like, yeah, was someone there like taking care of a bunch of machines that they could do this? That's what it sounds like. So it was a bunch of machines, but working on a machine that maybe you wouldn't be necessarily have to work on getting in there and doing it. This, I can't picture this taking less than God. What was it take? Like, I think like 20 minutes to do something like this. I've never, I would assume longer. If you're going to take the chips, take the out, board out, them. take the chips out, put them each individual into the reader. You got to have your, whatever your laptop or whatever there to, to transfer it, transfer it, put the, put the chips back in the board. And then you have to the be real there. certain of yourself that you're not going to fuck anything up when putting them back. Yes. Um, because that would blow your cover immediately. And then you'd be in a real shit show of a problem. So the the other, and we'll get into the possible ramifications and what this looks like in a second. The other theory is that one of the owners just finally decided to throw them up anonymously and, you know, did one so, of the three owners, one of the three owners put them up anonymously, basically leaked their own ROMs. And uh, I'm imagining did it anonymously because they didn't want to upset the other owners of the cabinets because potentially this could affect the value, affect the value oh of the God. cabinet. Oh, I'm so annoyed when I hear, hear this shit. Um, so so this was this has been something in the community for years, like because if you see these ROMs, excuse me, you see these cabinets at an event, you're going to say, why can't you dump the ROM? Why right. can't you do that for the community? Right. Just in case. Just in case. Plus, it'd be cool that we can also play this as well. But it's the stature of having it. It's the same reason why we almost lost the SimCity uh, prototype for NES. Because someone just wants to have, oh, only I can play it. Right. But even Well, this at least they can put them out for play. It's a prestige that I guess you have when you own a prototype that no one else can have easy access to. So I get it. I don't agree with it. I think it's a little slimy, but I get it. I... I so I hate the selfish attitude. I, I, I hate that aspect of it. 
But in on, in the case that this was really a heist, in the case that these were really not a time stolen, heist, no, not a time Rom heist. heist. Um, but in the case that this is actually a heist and these were stolen, uh, that's not fucking good either, because that's not how you that's not how you bridge this gap. No, it's not how you bridge this gap. But when you say they were stolen, what was actually stolen? Because the arcade owners don't own the intellectual property no, they don't. to that game. No. So that wasn't stolen. No, they have You want to say they stole it from Atari, whoever else owns uh, the rights to that game, uh, you can make that argument. But the, uh, the only thing that was stolen was an invasion of privacy of their machine and their hardware. Right. That was stolen. Well, the invasion of privacy is pretty big. That's big, but the ROM... That's real big. They don't... I, I, will, I can't underscore this enough. Those three rare cabinet owners don't own the intellectual property on that ROM. So no, but they own the only three copies of the game, sure, and they can decide what they do with them. Crocodile tears to me. So I, I see what you're saying though. You don't want to upset other people that potentially because you, got, you have stuff. to look at it this way. Um, you do that, and you do that, and yeah, I mean that that's that's slimy. I agree. I want the ROM out there, and I, I don't believe they own they don't own the intellectual property, and I believe it should be available for everyone. However. That's only going to raise suspicion and raise tensions between other people that own between rare stuff. people who own sure. rare stuff and people who want to dump it. Um, you can't do that. And even if, even if it's uh, is bad faith the right word I'm looking for? Even if you weren't going to get them to come around any other way, now they have an example they can point to, and be like. No, this is screwed up. I'm not giving you my stuff because this is how this half of the the scene acts. It, it, it's a way to build bad blood, and it, I mean, it, it can now they can now they have something to point I think to. There's and they already can bad blood, but well, the fact that they act selfish, it's already bad blood. Yes, I'm not in their corner, but yeah. you don't need to do it that way. Sure. Well, here's what the dumping you in CEO said: there were only three machines ever built. All are in high end collections. One collector had a tech come out. Come and work on some of his games. The unscrupulous tech copied the ROMs without permission. The game was not broken and not one he was supposed to, quote, fix. The owner is reviewing a couple of months of security video to see if he can catch him in the act. This is the first time that someone has actually had the balls to steal ROMs from a collector. So here's the here's the deal, though. What are you going to get him on? You, you, what, are you gonna, what would you arrest him for, uh, on? I don't know. Invasion? Vandalism of your arcade cabinet? Because he didn't steal anything. The cops are going to be like, what did he steal? Well, he took some digital information from this game. And the cops are going to be like, oh, that's that's not a crime. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it probably is if you own the machine. If someone comes in and takes shit off your computer when they're not supposed to, even if you don't own it or made it, that's still an invasion of privacy. There's a crime there somewhere. Okay, so... This if is, I come in and just so, start okay. grabbing shit off your computer okay. and leave... Well, well it's, not, it's not his computer. It's an arcade cabinet. But you're still getting... Okay, Data. Here, here's the thing. Here's the only thing I can say. You came into my game room. You saw an NES game. You copied the ROM from the NES game onto your computer. Right? This is basically what happened but from, but from a, a ROM board. That's what you did. So I can be upset that you did something you weren't supposed to do, but you didn't steal anything from me. You didn't. You didn't steal anything. Because I, I don't own that ROM to Chiller, Ian. Well, no. But I still did. There's got to be something illegal about coming into someone's house well, and no, it, doing he, shit. He was invited. He was invited in to fix other stuff. Yeah, and he did what he wasn't supposed to do. All right. So then, the, 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 that's a misdemeanor at some level. Okay, I get it. It was an invasion of privacy of a machine. I, I can't. I can't. I can't back that up. I. I want. I'm glad the uh, Rom is here, but I'm. I'm not going to make. I'm just saying this. Or say it, that it's he's a, it's okay. a crime. No prosecutor is gonna gonna sure prosecute that case. You know? I, I don't think that that's okay. I don't think that's an okay way to do it. Well, but th th here's the thing, though. Uh, if this doesn't happen, this is what this is what happens. When this person dies, someone's going to buy this machine, and either the cycle continues or someone comes in and says, I'm going to buy it, and I'm, I'm going to be one of the only person that has three, but I will dump the ROM. This is just time. But this is a timing for this stuff to happen. That's really what it comes down to. This stuff's not going to be undumped forever. It just can't. Sure. If it's a lost game, there's there's a couple lost NES games that I, I forget the one of them. I think one was a Color Dreams game. They still don't know what happened to the guy who owns it. And that was like the last time they heard of him was like 15 years ago. Then that's a potential. For an arcade machine like this, I think you're always going to know where it's at. So in that respect, I agree with you that eventually these are going to get dumped somehow. But we don't have to worry about it now because now it's dumped. So 
Obviously, it bothers you more than me at, at this point. And honestly, the value of these games does not go down because of the ROM getting dumped because the arcade cabinets, there's only three of them still. Oh, I don't see the value ever going down on those. There's, there's, there's three in their full cabinets. They're full, if beautiful anything, arcade cabinets. If anything, I could see it. And I it think just they, goes up potentially because people can play the game and think, oh, this is really cool. I think it's mentioned in the article. Yeah, now that people can play it and there's only three of them, it might actually increase the value. Uh, let's see. I talked to uh, Atari collector uh, Scott Evans. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Collecting... Uh, Evans uh, also owned two cabinets of Marble Man, the prototype sequel to Marble Madness, which is seen as another undumped Grail accessible. I always wanted to play that, the Marble Madness one. It, 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 I think it was like a couple of arcades they put it in. Uh, then there's uh, Bradley Trainer, a version of Atari's Battle Zone, modified for U.S. military training. Evans apparently discovered the only known extant cabinet for that next to a dumpster outside of the closed offices of Midway. So there's a there's more than one of these that are undumped still. Yes. So that's that's. We don't know about it as much because obviously a consoles are much, it's a much, it's a much bigger scene with console games versus arcades. Um, but all right, I'd honestly rather someone just fight a person for the ROM. What do you mean, like in, in the ring? Yeah, just beat them up and take them in ROM. a cage. Yeah, versus doing like this sneakily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd rather see cage fights. I for see ROM. the I see the harm in this, and I do. But I mean, it's like when you look at the balance of justice. Sorry. I don't, I don't, again, it's crocodile tears to me. Sure. It's the balance of justice of, 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 of 1% of people might think that, oh, it's their right to hold on to the intellectual property uh, of this versus the, the, the greater good saying, well, it's really bad if you do that. You know, I get, and I get some people email arguing that, well, they own the intellectual properties and no, they don't. No, they don't. They own the vessel it's contained on. Yes. If I died, uh, if I died tomorrow, uh, I couldn't have uh, Norm couldn't go uh, print copies of my book just because I'm gone. That's not how it works. I mean, he could, but he'd be in trouble. As a, someone who owned the estate owns the rights to that game. It, uh, abandoned wear doesn't hold up in court. It doesn't. That's not how copyright works. If someone, if an author of a book dies, just because no one's there to produce that work or to care for it doesn't mean someone else can automatically do that. It has to fall out of copyright first. So people have to brush up on their copyright uh, law. You can disagree with it, but that's the way it works at the end of the day. Okay. All right. So I, I want to play this now. I'm going to boot up. I haven't, up look good. I haven't updated my MAME in probably like 12 years. Probably not. You know, and the only problem with that, when you update the MAME, they correct it. So then your old ROM set doesn't work because they actually, they fudge some of the old ROM sets to work with it. So, yeah. that, so in order to make it more accurate, the old ROM sets don't work anymore. So then Pat can't play Paperboy easily, for example. Okay.